President Roosevelt is beginning to fear that if Joseph Stalin defeats Adolf Hitler alone, he'll conquer Europe for himself, replacing one tyrant with another. Roosevelt knows he needs to get the Americans into Europe as quickly as possible. He sends an allied force into Sicily, hoping to capture the island so he can establish a base of operations to launch an attack against the Axis powers in Europe. The moment the Allies have been waiting for has finally arrived. Over 160,000 troops storm into Sicily in the first major American operation in the European theater. Leading the charge for the Americans is Roosevelt's secret weapon. A man who's waited 25 years for this moment. Lieutenant General George S. Patton. Leaders like George Patton, around whom an aura begins to grow, have extraordinary power. For one, they inspire their own side. There's a sense that when you are working for Patton, we are gonna do things faster and better, and we're gonna win. I work for a winner. In the years since he commanded America's first ever tank brigade in the First World War, Patton has personally dedicated himself to building up the US tank division. From just a few dozen tanks to over 88,000. Patton arrives in Sicily with a plan to take control. I need you two to find me the most drivable path through here. Okay. He's going to seize the Sicilian capital, Palermo, and he's going to do it by any means necessary. Patton was an interesting character because he was the flamboyant leader that people respected for what he did, but there was always a second half to the sentence. George Patton is brilliant, but he's egotistical. He can't control running his mouth. On July 18th, 1943, Patton and his forces launch an assault on Palermo. Sweeping around the enemy, and capturing the city in just 72 hours. And now, with Sicily under their control, the Allies are ready to launch a massive attack on the Axis powers. On September 3, 1943, Allied armies move into mainland Italy, fighting back thousands of Axis troops. As the Allies take Italy, city by city, Benito Mussolini is forced to watch his beloved empire begin to crumble. Before long, Mussolini is summoned for an emergency meeting with his closest ally. Mussolini may have come to power first, but now the tables have turned. What you are doing to us now is you are causing us to have such problems and be the type of ally who can be of some use to us. And why, why do we have this relationship? Germany has given you everything. 
We have given you all that you have needed. We have given you artillery when you needed artillery. We gave you men, we gave our treasure, our blood, and now you come to me and you say no. We have spent enough time talking over these inane suggestions of yours about how to carry on this war. You will stop. There are several turning points in the Hitler-Mussolini relationship. First of all, Hitler regards Mussolini as the man who sets the example. The next step is end the war. Then when Mussolini does come in, it's a fiasco. The Italians now become very much the second class. Hitler began to regard the Italians as weak, as the weak link in the axis. See? Mussolini is sent back to Rome with instructions to hold the line. But less than two months later, Italy surrenders to the Allies. The first major Axis power has fallen. Adolf Hitler has watched the man he once idolized, overthrown in disgrace. And he knows the Allies are coming for him next.